This is the 30th story in the book called The War at Home. This is the painting I did for it, and it's on page 71 in my book, Tell Me a Story. Soon after my parents moved to Sheepsa Bay, war was declared, and there was a freeze on housing. Now, after moving every two years, they actually lived in the same place for eight long years. This was the apartment that my parents were to live in until they left New York to come to California. Our lives were very different during the war. My mother got a job working in a tent factory, making huge tents for the soldiers. And my dad worked in a shipyard as part of the war effort. I wore a key on a string around my neck and I came home to an empty apartment for the first time. There were blackouts every night and the subway trains were dark whenever they came up to the surface. I came and went from the train station when going to school in the dark in the winter, walking the six blocks close to the buildings for security. My mother decided that going to the High School of Music and Art was ridiculous. You don't have to make a living for anyone. That you should go to school when it's still dark and come home when it's dark again. I want you closer to home. I was transferred to Abraham Lincoln High School, the neighborhood school, and I couldn't wait to graduate. A Navy base was built in Sheepset Bay, and there was a rumor that one of the sailors, sailors stationed there had raped a girl. Everyone was frightened. I had never heard and thought of anything in New York as dangerous. It was my home, and everyone was a friend or a neighbor, and I believed people took care of one another. If an adult saw a child throw a soda bottle on, bottle on the beach, he or she would say, pick that up and throw it into the trash can. You are making my beach dirty. Now it became a scary place. The war, the blackouts, the air raid sirens. And now these strange young men from other parts of the country raping New York girls. New York was not safe anymore. I was taking a sculpture class coming home after dark and would carry my sculpture tool with a bent wire end swinging as I walked from the subway in the dark, hugging the buildings so that the tool would whistle and scare off an attacker. We, were belie we believed we were all in the war together and we had to do anything we could to help without complaining. Some of the older boys were drafted and went away. There, was, there were very few boys left at home. Water had to be used sparingly. Soap was rationed, as was coffee, sugar, butter, and cigarettes. We used a little soup bowl with uh, soapy water in it to wash dishes. We, we had coupons and tokens to buy the things that were rationed, but the black market was strong, and if you knew the right people, you, you could buy some rationed things through them. No one seemed to feel it was wrong. My dad bought cigarettes through the black market, for my mother and me after I started smoking at 16. He was proud to bring them home for us even though he had quit smoking years before because of a cough. He helped us get addicted. The war lasted through my high school years and beyond.